would like to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Join me up front. We'll uh, read this. We're going to start with a, a proclamation for the designation of the Building Safety Week in Claremont County. Carl, be up and receive this. Um, so this is the proclamation for the Building Safety Week in Claremont County, which is May 21st through May 27th, whereas Claremont County is committed to recognizing that our economic growth and strength depends on the safety and value of homes, buildings, infrastructure, that our citizens, both in everyday life and times of natural disaster. And whereas our confidence in the structural integrity of these buildings is achieved through the devotion of vigilant guardians, building safety and fire prevention officials, architects, engineers, builders, tradespeople, design professionals, laborers, and others in the construction industry who work year round to ensure the safety, constru safe construction of buildings. And whereas these guardians are experts in the built environment, they are responsible for the creation and the implementation of the highest quality standards and codes to protect these citizens, protect citizens in the buildings within our community. And whereas Building Safety Week is to remind the people, the public, about the critical role of our community's largely unknown guardians of public safety, our local code officials who assure us of safe, efficient, and livable standards. And whereas this proclamation of Building Safety Week of 2017 encourages all Americans to raise awareness of the importance of building safe and resilient construction, fire prevention, disaster mitigation, and new technologies in the, in the construction industry. Building Safety Week 2017 encourages everyone to take appropriate steps to ensure that, these, that the places where we live, work, learn, worship, and play are safe and recognized recognizes that countless lives have been saved due to the implementation of safety codes by local and state officials. And whereas each year in observance of Building Safety Week, Americans are asked to consider their commitment to improve building safety and economic investment at home and in the communities and to acknowledge the essential services provided by local building departments and fire prevention bureaus in protecting lives and property. And where, is it is, where, it is, where it is be hereby proclaimed that, Claremont, uh, that May 21st to 27th, 2017 is Building Safety Week in Claremont County. And according, accordingly, our citizens are encouraged to join their communities across America to participate in this week. And it's signed by the commissioners. Commissioner Humphrey, Commissioner Painter, and myself. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, Carl, would you like to take a word here? Well, I'd like to thank the commissioners for their proclamation. Um, I wanted to give them an update as to the uh, economic activity, the building activity that we've had in the, in the, in the county so far this year. Um, we've been very steady compared to previous years. Um, we've had a little bit of an uptick in um, construction across, across our area, and that's, that's, being, that's remained steady. Um, the Building Inspection Department recognizes that the county's economic growth and strength depends on the safety of the buildings that are built in our, in our community. I want to thank them for recognizing um, the, our department staff and the fire prevention officials in, the, in, in our county that we, we all work to make sure that the buildings are inspected and maintained safe. So I want to thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. We'll do a picture. All right. Kathleen wants one. Yeah. <coughs> and so would I. Oh, 
Thank you very much. You're going to have to do it. What's that? Okay, Carl, or Carl, Lyle, four letters, Y and an L or somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah. We've got a, a presentation by the Claremont County Water Resource Department, Water and Wastewater, five-year capital improvement plan, and the potential state and federal regulations. So I'm going to address the potential state and federal regulations first, and then I'll jump into our five-year capital improvement plan. Okay. Um, and... So, so the potential state and federal regulations ties to uh, the Presidential Executive Order 1377 that was released April 13th, 2017. And uh, that is titled Enforcing the Regulatory Reform Agenda uh, by President Trump. Uh, this directs federal agencies to reduce unnecessary federal, federal rules through newly created task, force, task forces. And EPA created a task force um, and they're seeking comment from businesses, trade groups, consumers, uh, state and local governments regarding uh, recommended repeal or uh, modifications to regulations that, that impact um, different, different uh, sectors. These comments are due May 15th of this year. And uh, I was contacted by, uh, it was actually the Warren County Sanitary Engineer, and he contacted Butler County, Greene County, Montgomery County, and Claremont County, and he's recommending or trying to get together a, a one letter to send on behalf of all five counties um, to this um, task force with uh, concerns that we have over either proposed regulations or existing regulations. And, and there were, we've been discussing several different um, talking points or things that we want to put in the, in the letter, um, but I think the, the, the biggest concern from us is the uh, point source phosphorus and nutrient limits that are proposed to be imposed upon wastewater treatment plants uh, without addressing non-point source pollution. Um, there's been several studies that have shown that uh, even if you reduce the uh, point source discharge to zero, that really there's no significant uh, improvement to, to stream quality um, so that it's really just money wasted with all the millions that we go into uh, uh, reducing phosphorus limits at, at wastewater treatment plants. There are some other concerns. Um, there's proposed uh, revisions to asset management, um, where EPA will require uh, detailed asset management programs for all utilities, all water and sewer utilities, and th those will need to be completed by 2018. Um, I've expressed to these other counties I'm not as concerned about that. I think I think what we have in place would meet the regulations. I think some of them have have some concerns so that might may be included in the letter um, and then <clears throat> one thing that I do share with them are the new lead and copper rules and proposed lead and copper rules uh, that continue to I'll say um, lump all water utilities in uh, into the same boat uh, we don't have any lead service lines in, in our system um, or known lead service lines they've never been permitted in our regulations but we continue, the new, new regulations continue to penalize us and make things more difficult for us uh, because of really what happened in Flint, Michigan. So I'm asking um, for your support to uh, participate in, in the drafting of this letter, and it would be submitted on behalf of all five counties at this point. I think the other counties are going to their commissioners as well and asking for support of that. So it's plan to bring us the letter and let us I can I can send evaluate you, it. I can send you a copy of the letter before it goes out before we determine if we're gonna sign our name. Or do you just need the authority to do the letter? Which are you looking for it from? I was looking for authority to, to just send the letter and copy you on, on the letter that actually goes out. But but you, if you'd like to see it. Let us see the letter, but absolutely I don't think there's any reason we'd wanna sure. deny you that. But. That's fine. I'll get you a copy of the letter, and then we'll, um, if you have any concerns with it, then we'll Good. go from there. Okay. So we'll individually get back to you, or do we need to make that an agenda item? It'll slow it down if we make it an agenda item. 
No. Well, because it's a two-week process, I see Judy giving me the eye. Adam, no, I don't always think, done. I don't think it needs to be an agenda item. I think uh, if, the committee, if it gets a draft letter to you and if you've got concerns, just go back to the line. Yeah. Unless there's some big issue which we need to consider all the board members on. Okay. Now we're on to the capital plan. I don't well, think I, I want to explain why we have. <laughs> What's why that? Why there's two copies? You might want to explain that. I did before. Okay. There, right. You might have two copies of the presentation. The, the one, the full size, was uh, version one. I made some uh, minor revisions to it, and I'll get you. Unfortunately, when I reprinted it, started to read. Full-size copies. <laughs> oh, I think we're fine. Yes. Well, this is good. But there's rooms, uh, room to put notes on it if you need to do that. I'm Lyle Bloom. I'm the director of the Water Resources Department, and I'm here to present the five-year uh, capital improvement plan update. We update this uh, every year about this time. Um, it is a five-year plan, so it's for year 2017 to 2021. Uh, it includes on the water side, we have 47 water projects that are in our capital plan, and on the, the wastewater side, we have 50 projects that are in the plan. I generally don't go through each project um, when, I, when I do the update. They are all listed individually in, in the capital plan itself uh, if you need more detail. Um, what, I, what we tend to do is look at um, what we did in 2016, what we're working on in 2017, and then what we plan to do in 2018. So just kind of capture that three-year period. Because the out years, they, it is somewhat uh, flexible, and, and it changes from year to year. So the projects move out and move forward. Sometimes they're eliminated or added uh, as we do our annual updates. So just to recap, 2016, we spent um, about on the water side about $3.6 million in capital improvement funds, the majority of that. Uh, almost 99% of that went to construction. Uh, the, the three big projects that, that used the, those, those funds, uh, the one was our 132, State Route 132, State Route 48, and State Route 28 water main replacement. And then our meter upgrades project, which is our also called our AMI, or Advanced Metering Infrastructure Project. That was the bulk of it. Uh, that was about $2.1 million of, on, the, on the water side. And then we had some uh, uh, transportation improvement district and ODOT projects that we uh, that we spent money on with capital funds. On the wastewater side, again, about 94% of that was <coughs> on construction. We uh, total was just under five million dollars in capital improvement funds. Um, the the projects that, that that we were working on in 2016, one was the Miamiville sewer extension. Uh, we had the again the meter upgrade project. We take. The, the meter upgrade project is funded 50% uh, by the, the water capital plan and then 50% by the wastewater because we use the, the, the meter information on the water side to bill for sewer. So that, that affects your sewer bill. Questions as you're going? Sure. <clears throat> Just explain the disparity between the engineering costs for water projects versus the wastewater projects when, um, you know, it's only off about a million dollars. As far as actual construction, so on the on the wastewater side, without going to look breaking it down in real detail, the majority of that cost would have been to the um, Newtonsville sanitary sewer project. Okay, uh, we didn't have any real big design projects on the water side. Okay, and we do some of the design stuff in house as well. I just I just saw that large disparity there on the three five versus fifteen thousand versus the you know four or five and the. Two hundred thousand. Okay. It and, it and it fluctuates from year to year. If we have a big project on one or the other, you'll see the engineering cost be up. Correct. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, we have the 2015 collection system rehab project that we spent a lot of construction cost on, and again, uh, that's the majority. Of that's all designed in house for that those the rehab projects, and uh, then the last was the Eichholz Road Phase Two sewer improvement project that we. Uh, did some sewer improvements in the Ivy Point area in uh, coordination with the uh, Transportation Improvement District project. So these are pro this project is the AMI project. 
we started that in 2015. We'll wrap that up this year uh, in 2017. We were replacing around 42,000 meters. All of our residential meters, our, our three quarter inch meters, have been upgraded at this point. Um, we're the, the contractors currently upgrading our one and a half inch and two inch meters, and they should be wrapping that up shortly. And then we also have about 200 large meters that we're going to replace using in house staff. This would be our three, four, six, and eight inch uh, water meters. Total estimated project cost is $8.6 million. Let's see, and it's scheduled to be complete uh, September 6th of this year with the contractor. Of course, the, the, the large meters will continue to upgrade those. We plan to get those done in the next two years uh, using in house staff. In 2016, we started construction, uh, and then we continued that into 2017 on, on the uh, State Route 132, 48, and 28 water main replacement project. We replaced over 9,400 feet of old 8-inch cast iron water main. It was installed in 1959 and 1964. We had repeated main breaks on it, and it was undersized. As, as, as the county's grown, we needed more capacity in the distribution system. So we replaced that with a new 16-inch uh, ductile iron main. Um, Total estimated project cost on that was just under $1.8 million, and we had almost $770,000 in, in an OPWC grant to, to help fund that project as well. That project, is, the, the installation is complete. Uh, the contractor still has to uh, finish up on um, yard and some pavement restoration. The other project uh, that started last year and has continued through this year is the, it's in Miami Township. It's the Miamiville Sewer Extension that started near our um, Warch Corner Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant and continued west along Loveland Miamiville Road and Sarah 126 to Warch Corner Road. It was about 3,200 feet of sanitary sewer. It was new sanitary sewer. The, the area was not served prior to that by public sewer. Um, it included the side streets of Riverview and Bed Ann Lane. We oversized the main trunk sewer um, to 12, 18 inch and 12 inch sewer for future extensions. Estimated project cost on that is just over $900,000. The majority of that is being paid through Miami Township. They have a TIF on a commercial property down there, the AMI uh, uh, property. So they're using that to pay for a majority of it. The county is paying for the oversizing costs to go to, to 12 and 18 inch. And then through the Office of Economic Development, through Andy's office, they were able to get a Duke Energy Incentive Grant of $35,000 to help offset some of the costs as well. <clears throat> I think that place is a a AIM. AIM. Did I, I said AMI. Yep. I've got too many uh, three-letter acronyms a running around in my yep. head. AIM. It is AIM. And that one is also substantially complete. We've sent out notices to connect, so property should be connecting soon. Um, but there is quite a bit of restoration that still needs to take place, including uh, repaving a portion of Loveland Miamiville Road. <clears throat> this year, we just we just recently started um, the in Miami Township the booster pump stations one and three improvements actually started late 2016. With the booster one, and I'll try to explain this, we'll be able to reduce our, our pump head by 60 feet uh, when we're pumping into the, the 930 pressure zone. Currently, the, the um, MGS water treatment plant in Miamiville is in the 860 pressure zone, and we pump from there into the 860 zone, and then from that we pump into the 990 pressure zone and back feed into the 930. So by the upgrades we're doing at, at, at the Booster 1 station, we'll pump directly from the 860 and directly into the 930 zone, so we're not back feeding. It's also going to um, just our 930 and 860 zones will be just uh, served by our MGS water treatment plant. We'll have, we'll have the ability to serve it from our other facilities, but that's going to help reduce our water age Currently, they could actually see water from the BMW or the PUB water treatment plant because it's interconnected. Uh, but this will just isolate that area just to the uh, MGS water treatment plant. So it will improve water age, improve water quality, 
and the total estimated project cost on that is just over half a million dollars. <clears throat> the other projects we're working on this year that are under construction, it's in Union and Pierce Townships. This is all under one contract. Uh, we have one contractor that's working on the Beachmont South Lift Station improvements. Uh, that's just uh, upgrades to the pumps, piping, and controls. Project costs on that is just over 330000 The other is the Nagel Lift Station improvements in Pierce Township. Again, that's uh, upgrades to the, uh, the lift station. We're actually converting it to a submersible pump station. It was a Posi Prime type uh, lift station. That project is substantially complete. They just recently wrapped that up. They'll be moving to the Beachmont South project uh, shortly. That project cost is just under 210000 And then the third <clears throat> that we're working on excuse me, <clears throat> is the Nature Run lift station upgrade, and that's upgrades to, to pump piping and controls. We're also adding an emergency generator there that, that did not have an emergency generator. So the project cost on that's a little bit more. That's just under $356,000. <clears> All three of those should be done this year. We're also wrapping up the collection system rehab project that we started in 2016. This is lining of portions of our collection system that um, were deteriorated by hydrogen sulfide corrosion. Um, also, we're lining a section of sewer on C off of Seabrook Way that it was uh, old vitrified clay pipe that had a lot of tree roots in it. it. It went through the woods. So we had a lot of sewer backups, repeated backups, because the tree roots would get into the pipe and, and back up the sewer. So we're lining that will eventually or essentially eliminate all the pipe joints. Um, the majority of the lining project is along Old 32 in Batavia Township. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> and they're about, I'd say, 85% complete on, on that. What and, the size of the pipes? Uh, on Old 32, that's an 18-inch concrete pipe. And then off Seabrook is 8-inch. And then we're also doing some work along Amelia Olive Branch. We're not actually lining the sewer there. We're relining all of the manholes uh, just due to hydrogen sulfide corrosion. These are typically downstream of multiple uh, lift stations where the discharge has high H2S concentrations. <clears throat> and the estimated cost on that is just over $3 million for all of that rehab, which, again, I think we've talked about this before, is much more cost effective to do that than to go in and physically replace the sewer. It's got uh, if, uh, enough capacity. If we just go in and line it, it essentially renews its useful life. Construction activity beginning in 2017. Uh, we just had the um, pre-construction pre meeting for the Wards Corner Road East Water Main Replacement in Miami Township. This is Wards Corner Road east of Branch Hill, Guinea. We're going to replace about 3,900 feet of 8-inch water main. It was ductile iron and cast iron, uh, both installed in 1972 and 1974. It should start... Um, It'll start this year and be complete, I think that says, in early 2017. Probably means early 2018 is my guess, a little typo there. Um, most of the construction should be done this year. We might end up with some restoration work in 2018. Total project costs. water main breaks in that area, right? Yes, repeated main breaks. And we would have one, and then we'd have about five or six more within a couple month period. Um, we have all of our main breaks in our GIS system, and you can, when you turn that layer on, that, that whole water main lights up with water main breaks. So the estimated project cost on that is just over $600,000. <clears> in Tate Township, uh, we're working on the Bethel Area Sewer Replacement. That, the construction of that should start late this year. We've been working on that for several years. Uh, we're going to upgrade original portions of the collection system there that were installed in 1941. Um, upgrading, increasing pipe size, adding capacity. Total estimated project cost on that is about $1.8 million, and we have an OPWC grant of almost $844,000 to help offset that, that cost. We still have probably five or six easements we need to get, and then we'll be able to bid the project out. <clears throat> Countywide, we, we partner quite a bit with 
the Transportation Improvement District Engineer's Office and ODOT when they're doing road improvement projects. Uh, the, their construction activities tend to impact our infrastructure, particularly our water mains. Usually, uh, the, those locations, our water mains are some of our older cast iron mains, so they need to be replaced anyway. So we end up uh, doing a joint project, and uh, it'll be one contractor in there replacing the main as well as doing the road improvement projects. We'll be replacing some main on Clough Pike near the new West Claremont High School associated with that road improvement project. Uh, we have some more main that we're replacing along Branch Hill, Guinea. Uh, north of Weber uh, to Jerales, associated with the road improvements there for the new Milford Elementary School. We're actually, we have two water mains there that are on both sides of the street, and we're going to replace both of those with, with one new water main. Uh, ODOT's doing some culvert work on 131. We're going to relocate the water main in that area. Uh, we've got on 132 south of Woodville. ODOT is doing drainage improvements. We're just going to move our fire hydrants out of their way. Uh, total length of replacement or relocation work this year associated with those road projects. We've got about 2,000 feet at an estimated cost of $325,000. These are some projects that we st we've started design in prior years, and we're going to continue design through Continuing in 2017, another typo. Up at the top. <clears throat> in Wayne Township, we've been working on the Newtonsville wastewater treatment plant collection system <clears throat> and treatment plant. And I guess we've been working on that s since the 90s. It's been around for a long time. That area currently is not served by public sewer. And the Board of Health has noted that there's a lot of um, failing septic systems in that area. So we've been in the process of designing a wastewater treatment plant and collection system to serve the village and the areas immediately surrounding it. Project cost is over $8 million. Um, it's, a, it's a very expensive project. It is, some of the costs are offset. We have a, we've been approved for a grant through U.S. Department of Agricultural Rural Development a grant of $2 million and a low interest loan of $4.2 million. And then we also recently received approval for a $1 million grant through Ohio Public Works Commission. The $4.2 million loan through USDA Rural Development, as it's currently proposed, would be paid through special assessment or repaid through special assessment of benefited properties uh, through the project. Detailed designs complete. We have an NPDES permit through EPA for the discharge of the wastewater treatment plant. Our plan currently is to schedule a public hearing in July of this year. Uh, depending on the outcome of the public hearing, if we proceed following that, we would begin uh, easements and, and we would acquire those late this year and then can start construction. We would bid the project out, start construction late 2017 or early 2018 and then have construction complete in 2019. Carl, this is Carl, the, or uh, Lyle, sorry. The uh, $4.2 million grant uh, from the USDA, a uh, low interest loan, is that something that would be put on uh, people's mortgages or how would that be repaid? It's a special assessment. So special they, assessment? They, yeah, they would have the option to pay the, the assessment off. Property taxes, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, they could pay it, they could write us a check after construction's done. The actual assessments are calculated on actual construction costs. These are all estimates. Uh, once construction's done and all the actual uh, costs are determined, they are given, I believe, 30 days. They're given notice and, and 30 days to pay the assessment in full. If it's not paid, then it would be automatically placed on their tax duplicate as a special assessment. And it, what's proposed is a 40-year, it's a 40-year loan, mm -hmm. so it would be a 40-year assessment on their, on their property taxes. And as, <clears throat> and as far as that particular location, what's there now? How many houses are served? And what's the assessment per household based on the estimate? So there's around 200 homes, oh. 200 lots that would be served, and I think 170 homes. Um, and there's different ways you can assess, assess it. It's a the minimum of the 100 foot of frontage is just over 18,000. 
So it's about an eighteen thousand dollar for a hundred foot of frontage. Okay. Uh, some the more frontage you have, the higher your assessment goes. Okay. So and then there are options. There are some agricultural properties. Um, agricultural properties can have deferments, which means the assessment isn't collected until it comes out of agricultural. But basically, a thousand feet of frontage, would, you'd be assessed at about eighteen thousand dollars. hundred feet. Hundred feet. Okay. And most of three lots at 40 feet a piece you know, 40 feet of frontage dealing with these older villages in, in public there really hasn't been involved yet you don't start like public hearing process until July not official public hearing we've had multiple public meetings okay uh, with the residents um, as with any assessment project there's there's some opposition to it <laughs> and then there's of course people in support of it as well we've tried to pull the residents over the years to find out how many people in support or how many people are opposed it, the responses we've received the majority are in support but again you still have a group that are that are opposed to it so okay and for those we've had i believe three public involvement meetings and also two other meetings with the village itself so we've been in and out of there several times over the last two years or so. okay and I should have introduced Chris Ruland as the assistant sanitary engineer. So he, oh, he really put the capital improvement plan together. Um, he manages our engineering group, our construction and engineering group. And then he's also the project manager on the Newtonsville project itself. So he. The typos are mine. Not yeah. Mine. <laughs> I wasn't blaming you. Thanks for coming, Chris. <laughs> he's the fall guy. <laughs> more design activity we're going to begin this year uh, in Miami Township we're going to begin design of a water main replacement on Milford Hills Drive Beachwood split rail and Saddleback will replace it the design will include replacement of about 4100 feet of ex existing six inch uh, cast iron water main uh, it was installed in 1959 again a lot of main breaks we have in that area it, in that area the, the pressures higher than uh, a lot of our other customers see. I think they're around 120, 130 PSI in that area. So that attributes to a lot of the main breaks as well. We'll also uh, begin re design of a main replacement also in Miami Township along State Route 28. This would be from Buckwheat Road to Branch Hill Guinea. We've got two water mains, uh, a 10 inch and a 12 inch, installed in 1959 and 1972. We're gonna replace that with one new 16 inch water main that the 116 will actually have just a little bit more pipe capacity than the 10 and the 12 but the real reason is both of those mains are under the pavement there and the pavements two to three feet thick every time we have a main break there it heaves a lot of pavement up we have a lot of pavement repair to make and it, it, it's expensive so it's going to be cheaper for us just to get that the new main out of the pavement completely and not deal with that in the future. <clears throat> on the wastewater side, uh, design work we're going to begin on. I think I talked about this earlier. Uh, Senate Bill 1 um, came out earlier this year through Ohio and requires all, all utilities with wastewater treatment plants of 1 million gallons a day or greater to do a phosphorus removal study and determine what it would cost to implement uh, treatment to remove to reduce your phosphorus discharge to one milligram per liter. <clears throat> Those are all due by December 1st of this year. Um, so we're adding that to the plan and we're gonna bring a consult consultant or consultants on board to help prepare the estimates and prepare the response to Ohio EPA. We would have, let's see, we've got our O'Bannon wastewater treatment plant, our Warts Corner treatment plant, Lower East Fork, Middle East Fork, and our Nine Mile plant are all over one million gallons a day and will all require the study to be performed. We'll also begin 
design in Pierce Township of the nine mile collection system improvements. Uh, this would entail design for replacement of about 6,000 feet of 18 inch and 21 inch sanitary sewer. It's the, some of the original collection system that was put in when the treatment plant was built in 1981. Uh, it'll include updating our hydraulic model of our collection system and flow monitoring uh, so that the pipes are correctly sized uh, to accommodate for any wet weather conditions and then also to help identify areas where we may be getting that extraneous flow into our system that we could also try to uh, eliminate any of those uh, ionized sources as well. Some other design work we'll be, we'll be working on this year. Um, one, say Route 132 north of Owensville, we've got two mains there. One's an old eight inch main and one is a newer, I'll say, uh, um, 1988 water main. We're gonna abandon the old eight inch main and switch the services that are connected that to, to, the, to the newer main. We've had a lot of main breaks on that, so we're just gonna abandon it in place and, and switch the services over. We're gonna work on a surface water treatment master plan. This would be for our Bob McEwen water treatment plant and evaluate that to, to to see if there's any opportunities to um, improve our or compliance with our disinfection byproducts rule, which is really why our GAC facility was, was constructed. Um, they're also going to look at uh, proposed regulations for algal toxins, pharmaceuticals, um, any future regulations that we see coming down the pike and what type of improvements we can expect that will be necessary at the Bob McEwen treatment plant so we can so that we can start to budget for those. Okay. The water distribution model maintenance, it would be a, a um, contract with a consultant to manage our uh, distribution model. We have a hydraulic model of our distribution system. Um, we don't have the expertise in-house to, to manage that. So it would be someone under contract to um, to, to handle what if scenarios or just updates to the distribution model. Our original SCADA system, we plan to begin design upgrade on that. That was installed in 2000 and that is our supervisory SCADA supervisory control and data acquisition. And that gives us the ability to look at our treatment plants and look at our uh, water towers to, to look at um, water levels in the towers and to manage that remotely. And we're going to up we plan to upgrade that to really match the software and system that we have on our sewer SCADA. We have two petition projects we're going to be designing this year. One is Rancho Lane Water Petition in Union Township and then the Taylor Avenue Water Petition in Stone Lake Township. On the sewer side, uh, we're continuing design on the Locust Lake lift station and conveyance improvements uh, to address uh, capacity issues at the Locust Lake lift station continued design on the O'Bannon wastewater treatment plant filter and clarifier improvements. And then we'll begin design in-house uh, to identify more areas in our collection system that need rehabilitation work. That would be our lining projects. We try to do those annually. And so we will start on design in 2017 for our 2018 project. We'll We're almost done. We're in the funding. On the waterworks side, we have available funding of just over uh, $23.2 million. That includes a grant, uh, grants in the amount of $1.6 million, uh, just over $2 million in contribution from wastewater funds, which would be for the AMI, AMI project. According to our schedule and our capital plan and the available funding, our five-year plan is currently or will be 100% funded. On the wastewater side, we have available funding of over 47 million. That includes 3.8 million in grant, 4.2 4 million in loan, and the $2 million contribution for the water meter replacement project. And again, according to that, we our five-year plan is 100% funded. The capital plan will be on the board's agenda here in the next couple weeks with a recommendation for approval. 
Um, once it's approved, we will put the capital plan, the approved capital plan, on our website, so that, that will be available for anyone to, to check that out there. But that's the end of my presentation, so if you have any questions or any additional questions. None for me. Thank you. Well, wow, Chris, looks pretty complete. Got one of the best water sewer systems in the state, so keep it We're keep very it moving. proud of it. We've got a good staff. Um, we're one of the few that we're not under any consent order. We haven't had drinking water violations in maybe 16 years now. Um, we've got a good track record, and we like to keep it that way. What <clears throat> What do you see as the future of the GAC technology out at McEwen? I don't know that there'll be much change in that. It's going to be how we manage water age. Mm -hmm. continue to manage it. We, we try to exercise our tanks daily. We let them drain um, and then we refill them to keep the water age down. Um, again, we'll continue to treat as much water as we can from our groundwater sources so that we minimize what we're treating if the GAC is going to do to the mm -hmm. cost to do that. Um, but I don't know that there's going to be much opportunity. What we may see is what we're really looking at is, is New regulations involving the algal algal toxins and whether yeah. we go to ozone treatment or something post treatment behind the GAC facility yeah. to provide more another barrier against uh, algal toxins or anything else, cryptosporidium, anything like that, that you may find from surface water. Okay. All right. Thanks. Good job. You serve on Ohio Public Works Commission. Yes. Who else does? From Claremont County. From Claremont County. Um, Pat Munger is associated with it. Um, Andy is is involved with it. I don't okay. know their exact titles, um, but we're all members of, of that. Okay. Good. And there's also um, the villages, too. Um, and there were some township representatives, but it was one or two people from all the townships and all the counties. So, but I was a township representative back when I was a township trustee. Just enjoy this meetings. Very good. Thanks, Lyle. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Okay, proceeding on, we uh, have the consent agenda in front of us for today's uh, regular session, May 3rd, 2017. If there's any, any items that you guys would like to pull or to discuss further, we can do that. Otherwise, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as shown. So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. Yes. Yes. Turning over to uh, page four, we have the non-consent agenda item item eight to pay our bills in the amount of um, resolution fifty four seventeen in the amount of eight hundred ninety nine thousand four hundred eighty dollars and thirty four cents. Can we get a motion for resolution fifty four seventeen? So moved. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Hunter. I'm sorry, Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Hubel. Yes. And item nine, um, again, resolution 55-17 to pay our bills uh, mm -hmm. and the amount of $46.22. That sounds a little more appealing. Um, <laughs> I'll entertain a motion for item nine. So moved. And I'll second the motion. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Mr. Painter. Abstain. Connie Tibby. Good morning. Good morning. Connie Tibby with the Department of Job and Family Services. Item number 10 is the recommendation of Judy Eshman, the director of the Claremont County Department of Job and Family Services, with the concurrence of Thomas J. Eigel, assistant county administrator, to authorize Judy Eshman, director of DGFS, the administrative agent for the Claremont County Family and Children First, to execute a master services agreement as well as the writer and order form or quote relative thereto, by and between the Claremont County Department of Job and Family Services and Social Solutions Global Incorporated out of Baltimore, Maryland, for the provision of licenses, software updates, and support for the efforts to outcome database utilized by Claremont County Family and Children First, 
It's effective for the period of May the 1st of 17 through June 30th, 18, pursuant to the terms and conditions specified therein and contingent upon the issuance and receipt of a purchase order. Okay, can we get a motion then to authorize Judy Ashman to execute a master services agreement with, as well as a rider and order form quote relative thereto with Social Solutions Global Inc. and contingent upon the issuance and receipt of a purchase order therefore. So moved. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Hubert. Yes. Thanks, Aye. Connie. Morning, Doug. Good morning. Number 11 is a recommendation of Pat Munger, County Engineer, concurrent to Steve and Rabel, the County Administrator, to execute record plat number 629-2998 for the replat of lots in the following subdivision located in Miami Township. This is for the Colonel H, Colonel John H. Branch's subdivision of Branch Hill, and uh, this is a replat of lot 53 and 56 to create a new lot number 106. Should we get a motion then? Um to execute record plat 629-2998 as referenced in the table in item 11. So moved. Second. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Yubel. Yes. Item 12. Number 12 is a recommendation of Pat Munger, County Engineer, concurrence of Stephen Rabel, County Administrator, to execute record plat number 629-2999 for the replat of lots in the following subdivision located in Monroe Township. This is for the Duns Ridge subdivision. Uh, this is for a replat of lots number 9 and 10 to create new lots number 12 and 13. We get a motion then to execute record plat 629-2999 um, as shown in the table in item 12. So moved. Second. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Ubel. Yes. Item 13. County Administrator to acknowledge the receipt of a notification from Pat Munger, the County Engineer, on April 24th of his determination to close the following road to through traffic with the understanding that all advanced warning and detour signs will be erected and maintained accordingly, pursuant to and in compliance with Section 554.3.17 of the Ohio Revised Code. This is for uh, Old State Route 74 between Amelia Olive Branch and Armstrong Boulevard, located in Batavia Township. This is in conjunction with the Old State Route 74 widening project beginning Monday, May 8th through Friday, November 3rd of 2017, as depicted on the Old 74 widening project detour map. We get a motion then to acknowledge the receipt of notification to close the Old 74 as referenced in item 13. So moved. Second. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Payne. Yes. Mr. Yubin. Yes. And item 14. Before we go on with that, I just want to make a comment about our closure that we've got scheduled for next Monday. Um, we're currently scheduled to open um, Old 74 between Olive Branch Stone Lake and Amelia Olive Branch on fr this Friday. Mm -hmm. so that will allow, <coughs> allow people to get off on the Olive Branch Stone Lake interchange and get over to Old 74 and go south on Amelia Olive Branch. So that'll kind of open that area up, which has been closed for the last several months. Um, but we're going to follow that opening of that intersection up with the closure of this section. But this section is not near the, the detour that the other one is because you'll be able to go down a media olive branch to get on the Taylor Road and come up Armstrong and get to Batavia and that, that area. So this is not near as a, um, I mean, I'm sure people won't like it, but it's not near as a, a detrimental as the other one was. So the access to the airport is will be open at that point? It will from essentially be open. This, good. Typically they would, they would have went down, they might have went down uh, Old 74 and taken a ride on Armstrong. Now they'll have to take a right on uh, um, Amelia Olive Branch and take a left on Taylor to get there. So um, it's not Good. near as near as bad as the others. Closed for almost what four months or so. Yeah, yeah. Now I will make a note that even though we we've called this as May eighth, uh, we're supposed to get rain, heavy rains tomorrow and Friday, <laughs> which may delay our Friday opening till Monday or Tuesday. Depends on they're out there paving today, so so hopefully we stick with our opening that whole intersection up this Friday, but we'll, we'll let everybody know as best we can if that doesn't happen. Good. We were out there yesterday. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks a lot different. So it, once you get asphalt down, it makes those projects look better. If you don't, if you don't open on May 5th, will you close it on May 8th? No, that's what I said. We'll, oh, del we'll, okay. delay, we'll push everything by two or three days if we can get it. 
Uh, item uh, 14. <coughs> Number 14 is recognition of Pat Munger, County Engineer, with concurrence of Steve Rabel, County Administrator, to award the bid for project number FR 33 15 relative to the Felicity Cedron Roadway Stabilization Project located in Franklin Township, pursuant to the plans and specifications, therefore, to W.E. Smith Construction out of Blanchester, Ohio, for the lowest and best bid received on March 23rd, 2017 in the mathematically corrected amount of $73,745.00 and to execute the contract relative thereto pursuant to and compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein and award of bid and contingent upon the issuance and receipt of a current certificate of liability insurance as well as a current Ohio Department of Insurance certificate of compliance in and as it relates to the surety for the bid guarantee and contract bond therefore and the release of the required purchase order in concert with, record with the uh, purchase order. We get a motion then to award the bid for project FR-33-15 to W.E. Smith Construction uh, and to execute the contract relative thereto with the contingencies as listed. So moved. Second. Yes. Aye. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Mr. Rabel, welcome back. Thank you. Item 15 is recommend, my recommendation to adopt resolution number 56-17 resolving to authorize the transfer of 0 0.4368 acres titled in the name of the Claremont County Board of County Commissioners to the Claremont County CIC Incorporated for consideration of $1 and authorize Commissioner Ubel to execute the quick claim deed as prepared by the Office of Prosecuting Attorney and further to authorize Andy Kushta, Director of the Department of Community and Economic Development in consultation with the Office of Prosecuting Attorney to execute all other documents necessary to convey said property and to do complete the recording of the transaction relative thereto. This is the old corners building on Main Street that, that we've talked to the board about in the past. Transfer it to CIC and then and the CIC can have ability to either lease it or sell it or, or uh, dispose of the property, but it'll be taken off Board of County Commissioner's books and added to the CIC books. Okay. Can we get a motion then to adopt resolution 56-17 as referenced in item 15? So moved. Second. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Payne. Yes. Mr. Yuval. Yes. And item 16. Item 16 is the recommendation of Joe Ellison, Chief Probation Officer, Claremont County Municipal Court, Adult Probation Department, and Julie Fry, Director, Claremont County Court of Common Pleas, Adult Probation Department, with my concurrence to Amend resolution number 35-16, previously ratified by the board on 3-9 and 16, to modify the composition of the membership of the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council and to appoint and or reappoint the following individuals to serve as members on the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council in their official capacity for a term of 5-14-2017 through 5-13-2020. This is pursuant to compliance with section 5149.34 of the Higher Revised Code and the recommended members are in the table. Okay, then can we get a motion to um, amend resolution 35-15 and to appoint and or reappoint the following individuals in the table in item 16 uh, to the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. So moved. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Hubel. Yes. Suki, good morning. Good item, morning. item 17. I've got item 17. Um, it's actually the recommendation of Pat Monger, County Engineer, to adopt resolution 5717, resolving to authorize the issuance of not to exceed $175,000 worth of Miami Trail Stormwater Revenue Bond Series 2017. These will actually bear interest at 3.5%, which was determined uh, a week or so ago when we talked to the Investment Advisory Committee. Uh, these bonds will be sold to the treasurer. There'll be a 20-year maturity on them. Um, this resolution is authorizing the sale to the treasurer um, and in concert with the bond purchase agreement and also resolving to authorize Stephen Rabel, county administrator, to execute the reference certificate award and the bond purchase agreements um, pursuant to the terms and conditions of those. These are all in concert with resolutions 144.15 and 145.15, which we in, in 2015 when we established the Miami Trail stormwater, as well as the rates. It was determined at that time that in order to do some of the construction costs, a revenue bond would have to be issued 
the rates are sufficient from the uh, collection from the Miami Trails people of the stormwater fees to be able to pay this debt service. It actually has a maximum principal in 2023, maximum principal and in interest of about $15,250. So it's a it's a, percentage, a small percentage of the, actually it's not a small percentage. It's, it's a good percentage of the actual revenues, mm -hmm. but the rest of the construction is gonna be minor for a while outside of what he's gonna be able to do with this 175,000. Sold to the treasurer, meaning we're gonna we're gonna keep the bonds, buy them ourselves. We'll, sell, we'll sell them to the treasurer. They'll go in as one of the investments of the county pooled funds. So the treasurer will have a 20-year maturity at 3.5 percent every year. Um, it's in excess of what we'd be able to invest in with our county pooled funds as far as a return, and it's also beneficial to the rate payers who are paying the interest because we're saving money for them by not having to go out and issue these on the open market. We'll save the Moody's expense, we'll save underwriting expenses. So it's a it's a win-win for both. You, you said not, to, uh, says not to exceed 4%, we, but then you when said- When I wrote this, we, we hadn't finalized the interest rate. So we did finalize that at 3.5 and it will be fixed coupons across all 20 years. Still better than some of the other investments we have. Right. Especially in the short years, we don't we don't have anything in the in the short years. We're we're even close Every, to a three point five. in the long long range. Yeah, yep. Now in yep. twenty years, you know we may be getting three point five percent on this with our pooled funds, and other interest might be higher. But over the course of the twenty years, we're we should be fine. Good. Any questions? Nope. We we do plan to close on this June first. I'll I have to make sure that all these signatories are going to be available. Um, we won't actually transfer money until June 1st. Mm -hmm. So therefore, our first interest payment will be December 1st of this year. It's been a long process. It's nice to wrap it up and put a bow on it. It so. will allow him to continue. They've done uh, some improvements out there already. The, the um, emergency improvements have been taken care of with an advance from general fund. Some of these monies will go back into that fund to allow it to repay the advance. And then he's got the next stage of improvements for some of the some of the lines that uh, are a little bit older and a little bit uh, less I don't want to get stable as far as the materials go. When do you say first interest payments due? We'll be due June first of this, 1st. or I'm sorry, December first of this year. We'll close okay. June first, so we'll have a six month interest and a uh, principal payment June December first. And can we get a motion then to adopt resolution 57-17 as referenced in item 17? So moved. Second. Aye. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sidney, Thank you. for doing that. Uh, Mr. Raybould, any additions at this point? No, sir. Okay. Um, we have no need for executive session today. Hurrah. Uh, so let's take a uh, brief recess as the uh, minutes are prepared. We are back from recess, and we uh, have in front of us the minutes from today's regular session of February, February, May 3rd, 2017. And uh, after reading them, if we could get a motion to approve the minutes from today, that would be much appreciated. So moved. Second. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Mr. Yubel. Yes. And can we get a motion to adjourn? Yes, so moved. Second. Aye. Gainer. Yes. Yes. Thank you for coming. See you uh, Wednesday. See you Wednesday. National Day of Prayer tomorrow. That's it. See you Wednesday?